Hello friends, welcome again. This is Badal again. You are watching my channel PP Tutorials. Today we shall be talking about a CBSC class 10 poem, A Tiger in the Zoo. Uh, we know already this falls in CBSC English term class 10 syllabus and the poet of this poem is Leslie Norris. Anyway, let us talk about the poem straight away. Uh, this particular poem, Tiger in the Zoo, it clearly talks about the uh, you can say dire situation of a tiger dire situation of a tiger why tiger is a dire situation there are lots of debates here and there tiger should be kept in the natural habitat or in the zoo what is the safety what is better what is good however this particular poem will tell us that a tiger should not be in the zoo and it should be in the natural habitat it talks about a dire situation a tiger is in a tiger is never good in a confined state. Here we shall find basically three things. First, we shall see the story of the zoo. Then we shall see how the poet imagines the tiger to be there in the jungle. Then we shall be talking about the tiger to be in the jungle. And, and then we shall be take, talking about tiger near households. We shall be talking about tiger which would be near households. Of course, these are just the hypothetical imagination of a poet. And then again, we shall be talking about the tiger which is in the zoo. We shall be getting back to zoo where the tiger would be in a very much deplorable situation, craving for freedom and in a helpless state. These are the sequence that we shall get to see again. Let me remind you, at first we shall learn tiger in the zoo, then we shall be taken to uh, in an imaginary state, tiger in the jungle, then again near household, of course in the jungle near household and then again we shall get back to the situation of zoo. And before I get to the poem here, I would request those who did not uh, subscribe my channel, please subscribe it. It will it will give me encouragement and all to create more videos like this. Anyway, let us read what is written before uh, the poem. This poem contrasts the tiger in the zoo with the tiger in its natural habitat. Though there is a contrast, you see the word here contrast, contrast of a tiger which is in the zoo first hand and second hand which is in the natural habitat. But one thing we must remember that the tiger is same tiger, it is not a different tiger compared in the zoo and as well as the natural habitat. Anyway, let's get to the point here. The poem moves from the zoo to the jungle and back again to the zoo. Read the poem silently once and see which tiger speak about the tiger in the zoo and which one speak about the tiger in the jungle. Well, before we begin the poem, we must talk about the rhyme scheme of the poem over here. There are lots of poetic devices used in this particular poem. We shall be talking about those even. Let us talk about the rhyme scheme. Before we get into the rhyme scheme, there are different opinions in this rhyme schemes of the five stanzas. You can see here four line stanzas are there. This is a poem which deals in quatrains. What is quatrains, friends? These are called the stanzas carrying four lines. Anyway, we shall find here first stanza, second stanza, fifth stanza. These are having uniform connection as far as the rhyme scheme is concerned. How? You can see stripes A, H, B, quiet, quiet C, and again rage B, cage, rage, uniformity. Whereas A and C are not there in uniformity, stripes and quite a different. The signal we shall find in the second stanza, even take a look at shadow, grass, hole, pass, grass, pass. And if we jump to the next and uh, the last stanza, then we find uh, the poetic device to be again night, cars, eyes, stars. Again, in the form of we find in cars and stars. Whereas the other two stanzas, like third stanza and the fourth stanza, are having little variation, of course. Some may have a little debate on this about the third stanza, especially, but these are having different rhymes. Though, just take a look at what's houses A, H, B, clause C, village D, H, village. Though it seems to be a little uh, matching, but there is a little difference in this, so it should be different in rhymes. A, B, C, D. The similar thing we shall find there in the fourth stanza cell A, bars B, cage C, visitors D. So in this way, the rhyme scheme is like this. So let us talk about the line by line analysis right now of this particular poem by Tiger in the Zoo. As we go through the line by line analysis, take a look at his stocks in his vivid stripes. 
So here the keyword stocks, vivid and stripes. Now what is stocks here? Here it's stocks is called moves. One who moves here, the tiger actually moves. Moves where? Moves of course in the cage. We shall get to know about this later on. Uh, and how is the tiger here? Uh, having stripes. What is a stripe? It's called the pattern. Pattern on pattern of the tiger. Pattern of the tiger. Uh, of course, it talks about pattern of the tiger. Of course, on the body of the tiger, I'm talking about vivid means here, clear and bright. So it says that the tiger moves here. He here in the sense the tiger. Tiger is actually uh, referred here in a personified form. So the tiger stalks in his vivid stripes. And the tiger, which is having pattern on the body, it is very bright and clear. And the tiger is moving there where in the cage you can see the few steps of this cage i like this particular light a lot because the poet has consciously used here the word few what does it mean it talks about limitation limitation that the grand animal the tiger is put into right now the tiger has got a very few steps to be taken over there in the cage because cage is a very small place it is symbolic of confinement a cage is symbolic of confinement. A tiger is not at all in a good state when he is in the cage. However, and then we get to know about what? The, it is said that and the tiger is moving there in the cage, having very less space and a situation of confinement. And it lives on the pads of velvet quiet. And pads, pads of the tiger. I, I hope you know this one. However, let us go through and take a look at about the pads of the tiger. Here you can see. Just give me a second. Here it is. You can see here pads. This is the pad which is velvet. First of all, very soft. That's why it is referred as velvet. You can take a look at particularly the uh, light here again. Here, the pads are called the paws of the tiger, which is velvet. Velvet in the sense here, exactly very soft. Soft. And why is it called quiet? The word quiet is different here because it does not make at all noise. It does not make noise. When the tiger walks, actually, it doesn't make sound and noise at all. And then the last line that you get to know it is written here in his quiet rage. The tiger walks in the cage on the velvet, very soft and uh, quiet kind of movement there on his pads and he is there in a state of quiet rage. What is quiet rage? This is a perfect, perfect, perfect example of what we call as oxymoron. You know, uh, two contrasting words are put side by side and this gives a very deep implication. It talks about the helpless state of the tiger. The tiger is in a total helpless state. Why? The tiger has no way the tiger is helpless because he is he is put behind the bars. He is in a situation where he has got nothing to do. He cannot do anything. Whatever he try, he is there confined in the hands of the cruel humans. Let us talk about the second stanza and here the second stanza as it goes. You can see he should be lurking in shadow. Remember this particular stanza, it actually takes us not in the cage this particular stand just takes us to jungle the natural habitat that the tiger should be the poet here imagines what should the tiger uh, what in what situation the tiger should have been instead of staying in the zoo so here it's here it says that he should be lurking in the shadow what is lurking here the sense should be taken here as hidden or you can say hiding the la the tiger should be hidden there in the shadow shadow of what Shadow of, of course, plants and grasses and dull plants or grasses in plants of grass or grasses there with the tiger hiding itself. And what is the tiger doing? Sliding through the long grass. See what is sliding here? Sliding is called his swift movement. The tiger is swift in its movement. And the tiger will be uh, having swift movement through the long grass. And where will it happen? The poet here consciously and very intellectually. Uh, tells us the position near the water hole. Why water hole? It is the water hole where a tiger is supposed to get its prey. Tiger enjoys sport killing. The tiger is known by tiger by its ability of sport killing. You know the sport killing, chasing a tiger, chasing the animal of prey and killing it and then eating its flesh. This is a tiger in its natural. So tiger waits where? 
the tiger waits near the water hole. You can see tiger is in the water hole, near the water hole. It waits for the other animals to come and drink water and then it will pounce on them and simply finish them. And this is what the tiger is actually. Well, now here you get to see where plump deer pass. Why is the poet referring here plump deer? He has already referred here the animal that, that the tiger generally goes on taking as a prey. But why plump? Plump is called here healthy. Healthy. Why did the poet use here healthy? Plump deer. Why plump deer? Because it is the reason that the deer and the sport killing and a healthy deer this is not what the tiger gets in the zoo zoo in the zoo they are having an artificial life the a life where the zoo caretakers they'll come with the flesh is chopped somewhere and it is not going to be what they desire it is what is adjusted for them it is what is meant for them so he has a desire and he has a longing for those plump deers to sport kill and eat and that is not possible for the tiger and here the poet consciously uh, takes us to that situation that what he should have been anyway let us talk about the third stanza here he should be snarling around the houses remember this particular stanza this stanza actually takes us where near households near households and this is of course jungle it is not there in the households of the people. It is actually jungle. Near the jungle, households are there. There the situation is taking place. What happens over here? Take a look at once. Let us see. So here the poet says that he should be snarling. What snarling? Making noises. Noise by nose we call as. Noise by nose. This is called snarling. So he is going to be snarling where? Around the houses. Houses of what? Houses of the humans humans living near the jungles and where it is jungles age what is age here outskirt outskirt of the jungle there will be the tiger and what will be the tiger doing actually in the outskirts of the jungle bearing what is bearing here exposing 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 what exposing his white fang generally the word fang is referred as teeth of poison you know it refers it connects to poison but here it doesn't mean anything poison it's called deathly teeth sorry deathly teeth so it talks about deathly teeth teeth of the tiger and the the word white here perfectly refers two things here first of all the fang the teeth which are white at the same time the white symbolic of death you meet his fangs you be dead you will be the picture simply if we say <laughs> so and what else claws you can see the claws over here so we see here three things that a tiger uses to terrify its opponents first it uses the snarling sound second it uses its fang that is called teeth and third claw so these are the elements a tiger uses before killing a an animal and how, what does the tiger do with these things? Terrorizing the village. It actually makes the inhabitants there in the village very, very much afraid of the presence of the tiger over there. This is a this is what a tiger is in its natural habitat, and this is what a tiger should be, not confined in the zoo at all. Let's talk about the stanza number four right now. We had completed up to stanza number three. We are talking about stanza number four right now. Let's talk about. Or oh, here it is, but he has he is locked in a concrete cell. This concrete, the word concrete here, the poet has again used here very consciously. The word concrete refers to the humans confinement. Confinement that is created by the humans. Humans are the cruel ones which confines the animal like the tiger. But he is locked. Who is locked here? The tiger is locked. Tiger is locked where concrete cell cell, which is made up of concrete this has an adverse reflection of what we call as natural habitat wait here clearly and very uh, consciously uses the mm, situation of what we call as human confinement along with there is nat natural environment well you see again his strength behind the bars if you talk about his strength his strength is made actually null and void his strength is null and void because he is put behind the bars. He is put behind the bars and that's why we cannot say that his strength is, is 
really the strength which is in full capacity right now his strength is behind the bars he is actually behind the bars right now and then what uh stocking the length of his cage the length of the cage whatever the length of the cage is there the length of the cage he's doing what stocking stocking is what walking in a way of threatening he is actually walking in a way of creating the way he walks inside the small periphery of the cage he actually wants to say people out that he is not at all in a pleasant state here and he is in a state of complete what we call as anger and this actually talks about his irritation annoyance and then the last line that is the that is used here 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 it is it is telling us about he ignores the visitors ignoring the visitors because he has got nothing to do with the people who are just outside the bars if there had not been the bars there would have been interest of killing them and eating but here he knows because of these humans who are outside he is in a situation right now and there is no effort or no benefit of crossing the bars and going and doing something over there then what happens you see he hears the last voice at night last voice at night he hears who hears the tiger hears the tiger is again back in the zoo and this particular two stanzas will talk about tiger back in the zoo and the tiger tells here what the tiger tells the tiger tiger is presented by the poet here that he hears the tiger hears what the last voice at night what is the last voice at night and this is the voice of the patrolling cars what's the impl implication of the patrolling cars as the tigers put in the zoo is a bigger periphery and a lot of animals are put in the uh, in the nearby bars or the cages or the nearby establishments and also this is the work of the people there at night who move and they patrol by cars actually check whether the animals are there in the correct places or not whether they have already broken those who, cages and gone somewhere else or not so these are to be confined these are to be checked these are to be verified so the patrolling cars are found there moving at night in the zoo so he hears the last voice of the patrolling cars and what else and stares what's called staring looking fixedly at something and the tiger actually looking he looks fixedly where he looks we shall jump to we shall jump to the last line once this is brilliant stars and how he looks with his brilliant eyes what is brilliant eyes eyes which are bright eyes which are full of full of dream dream for what of course only one thing nothing but freedom the eyes we each reflect only freedom and the eyes they look for freedom the eyes are bright the eyes are deadly these eyes of the most cruel animal they are also having a dream of freedom because they are confined and they uh, they look at what they stare at the tiger stares at the brilliant stars the stars which indicate infinity the stars which indicates complete freedom it talks about complete indicates towards complete freedom so we can say that the poet is here trying to put that the tiger at night looking at the brilliant stars indicating the infinite space of freedom that he doesn't have that he dreams that he desires that he longs and that he wishes to have uh, here it goes thank you very much for watching my channel if you have anything to say about my analysis please write in the comment box i shall of course try to answer your questions and if you have any desire any particular topic to be done please let me know i shall do it surely thank you